Hey everyone, in this video, I want to go over with you on the global fonts and how you can set them up in your Elementor editor so you could save up some time or even a lot of time while you edit or while you design your design for your clients or your own website. So without further ado, let's dive right in. So I'm here in my editor. As you can see here, I have a few headings. I have a text element over here and I have a button over here. Now, I just want to explain, first of all, the thing with the headings. As you can see here, each of these headings are from the bigger to smaller, but you would notice if I'll head over to the content tab right over here, you will to see that under the HTML tag is set it up to H1. Now the following would be H2, H3, H4, five, six. Now these H1 to six is set up for your SEO on your website. So Google knows from H1 is the main heading for the page post, what have you on the page. So he would know that this is the main title for this page. Now the other H2, H3, H4, and H5 and H6 are designed to be one under the other. So for example, the H1 would be the main heading, the H2 would be the subheading, and if you want to put a subheading under the h2 for example there is a sub subject in the subject that is under the h2 you would put an h3 h4 h5 and h6 and so forth one of the things that i've heard is that people use h1 to h6 for size purposes now i don't think that's quite right but you can do whatever you want on your website but just in terms of google it's not good that's what i wanted to mention here but other than that usually you would go to style and then you'll be able to set up a different size for that heading so so what you want to do is turn your over in the style tab over here, you'll head over to the typography and under the typography, you'll be able to set it up, whether it's the font family and the size, the weight, the line height, the letter spacing and so forth. If you've noticed, there is a globe icon or world icon, which would enable you to customize it or to save the font. If you head over again, back to the typography and over here, you have the plus icon, create a new global font. So this is what I wanted to show you mainly in this video and how you'll be able to access them and how you'll be able to use them in order to speed up your workflow. In order to do so, I'll head over with the H1 over here and then I'll head over to the style tab over here and then as you can see here, I have already the globe icon over here in the pink color. It means that it already is using one of the global fonts that I've already set it up. Specifically, it is setting up to accent. Now, what if I want to change those global fonts? What you want to do is while this window is open, you want to head over to the wrench icon, manage global fonts. But if you don't want to head over from there, one other option that you can do if you're in the old sidebar editor in Elementor, you would want to head over to the icon over here and then head over to the site settings and over here you'll be able to see the global fonts right over here now the global colors will touch them but a little later in this video head over to the global fonts and over here you'll be able to see that something's changed as we can see here the global fonts and the global colors are showing up in one page but as you can see here we have the primary secondary text and accent just what we've seen before when we open up the global fonts so here you'll be able to change what the style of each every of the global fonts as you can see here so you just click the pencil icon. Now, other thing that you can do, you can just move them around just clicking on this arrow or all direction arrow over here, just dragging and dropping it as we usually know in Elementor. Now, again, click the pencil icon over here and you'll be able to see that it sends you over here into the primary. So you can see here the system fonts. Now, here you can set up a different font, a different size, weight, transform, style, decoration, line height, and so forth to your own likings. For example, let's change the font family from Roboto to let's do something like assistant and then let's do the font size even though it's in pixels and i would prefer to use rams but let's head over with something like 70 pixels you can see it's quite big and let's do font weight of let's do something like 300 light and then line height i'll switch that to m's and i'll put 1.2 now once you set that up you'll be able to see that you'll be able to use the primary system font right over here once you're editing any heading on your website now, one thing to mention is that you can also add some custom fonts and then you'll be able to use them again to speed up your workflow. For example, let's add a custom font right over here, add style, click this button. You'll be able to see that you'll be able to also name it. For example, let's do main titles and then just leave it as it is. And then you'll be able to edit it. And let's do something like time 
new time new roman and then let's do something like 50 pixels and then let's change the font weight to something like 500 or even 400 and then let's do also the line height as not pixels change it to m's and then 1.2 and then click out of this box and then just click update now if you want to go back to the edit page or you want to exit out of this size settings you have two options you can either click the x icon over here or click back over here that will lead you back to the side settings that we see here and we'll touch the typography and the buttons in a few minutes but just wanted to show you how to click out of that and then over here the same thing you would click x now if we'll go back to our h1 heading we'll be able to style it a little differently than it is showing up right now let's head over back to our typography and let's click the globe icon over here we'll be able to see that our global fonts have changed we have here the primary and if we click it we're able to see that even though the h1 is set up to a specific pixel value we'll be able to see that it still applies the styling that we've just set it up over in the side settings as we can see here now if we'll click or we would want to change it a little bit we'll still be able to click the pencil icon over here and we'll be able to see that it's still on assistant 70 pixels at phone weight of 300 as light and line height at 1.2 now let's say i will bring it back to the primer over here and then let's go to our h2 heading even though it will be smaller than the h1 that we set it up over here i just wanted to show you the other option the custom file that we just created so let's head over to our h2 and we'll be able to see under style we'll be able to see here our typography let's change it to our custom font that we just made over here under main titles each of the names we'll be able to see over here now this is one of the other things that i wanted to tell you it is very important that you name those global fonts if you wish to create them they will have a specific meaning behind them i would really encourage you to create them ahead of time before you start stylizing and building your website so that way you'll be able to just drag and drop the headings or the elements that you want to and then you'll be able to choose the global fonts and then you'll be able to know what the global font actually means because you've set it up ahead of time and that way you'll be able to click the main titles and be able to see that now it's a different font different font weight and exact same line height as we will be able to see in a minute as you can see here it applies the global font through the globe over here and we can see here when i hover it it will tell me main title with this little tooltip and when i click it you'll be able to see that it's in times new roman 50 pixels weight of 400 as normal and then line height of 1.2 pixels but let's change it m over here i think there is a bug here but it's 1.2 m and then other than that the other thing that you can do is also set up the global colors for your website before you start stylizing everything again that would also save you time in the future because elementor by default comes with a few system colors which you can change them and if we'll click the default over here and the global colors we'll be able to see the primary is somewhat of bluish and we'll be able to see that the secondary is dark gray and text is gray and the accent is green now what if we want to change them so again you'll head over to the wrench icon over here and i will redirect you or change the page over here to the global colors and we'll be able to change them right over here you'll be able to choose it just by clicking it and then you'll be able to drag and drop the color over here let's do something like that blue or even do something like yeah light orange and then let's do the secondary color as something different for example let's do something like blue and then let's say I want to add a different custom color of my own. For example, I'm working from a design and I'm just building the website like I usually do. In that case, you would want to go to the add color button over here then click it and you're able to see that we have, again, we have a custom colors and we have our option to name our color. For example, let's do um, dark red and then head over to the color over here you'll be able to drag the color wheel over here let's do something like this whoops like this and then we'll be able to also if you want to change the opacity over here but i will keep it as the maximum and then we'll be able to see that whoops it's still sliding over here i've just came back over here but then you'll be able to see that when i click out of that and now i'll click update and then i will just exit the side settings over here you'll be able to see that now i'll be able to use those colors on my headings but buttons, background colors, whatever you want to, just by a click of a button, instead of what I will have to just go back and fetch the X color, RGBA, RGB, HSL, whatever color that you're using. And then that basically saves time in the long run. For example, I want to stylize that button. I'll click the button and I'll head over to the style tab over here. And then I'll just head over to, let's say the uh, background color over here. And then I'll just click the default and then we'll be able to see their primary, secondary, or the dark red, as we can see here. 
here and then I'll be able to apply it. Now, one thing that I would want to note here is that be careful when you use the global colors. What I've seen from experience is that when you use them, they're not always acting as you think they should. So sometimes you would need to disconnect them and just by clicking the color itself and they would disconnect from the global color. Usually they work good, but if they don't, just make sure that you just click the color itself and then it will fetch the color by itself. What I want to just mention here is that all these global fonts, global colors are here just to help you. So you'll be able to prepare yourself for the website or for the design that you're stylizing, whether it's a landing page, post template or whatever you are styling. So you'll be able to increase the speed of your workflow even more. Now, out of that, if I want to head over to my typography, as we've seen before, you want to head over again, instead of going to the pencil and then doing everything by hand, just head over to the global fonts over here. And then you'll be able to use one of these ones from primary, secondary text, accent, main title, or whatever you have other thing that you've set it up ahead of time. Again, main title, as you can see here, it will scale or will grow depending on what I've already set it up ahead of time. Now I'll obviously scale that down. For example, let's do something like 20 pixels. And I think that should be good. The other thing that I've promised to show you is under the settings, if I'll head over to my site settings is the typography here. Even though I've showed you the global fonts. Now remember the global fonts and the global colors are controlling the colors and the fonts on the website. Now the typography over here, you'll be able to style as the body text color and the body text typography. Specifically, if you're setting up the text of the main content on your website. Now, the other thing here is that we'd be able to choose what by default would be H1, what would be its color, what would be its typography, H2, H3, H4, H5, H6. All of these ones, the same thing will apply. Again, you can use the global fonts and global colors, as you can see here. That is also another upgrade to speed up your workflow even more. Now, the other thing here, if we'll go back over here, we'll be able to see the buttons. The buttons here also, you'll be able to stylize them ahead of time. For example, let's say your buttons have a specific padding that you want to keep consistent. So this is here to help you with that. Let's unlink these values. As you can see here, it's already changing over here. And let's do something like top 10 bottom 10. Now let's keep that as it is. The other thing here, again, as before, you can change the color and the typography, but I won't touch that right now because we've already stylized that button. Now click update. When I'll go back and I click out of that and I'll head over back to my widgets. And when I drag and drop a new button, you'll be able to see that it will be stylized almost the same. Even though our font is not the same as we can see here, we haven't set it up that before. We just set it up the padding. And if we'll go to our style over here, we will to see that our padding, even though it seems like it doesn't have any value, but behind the scenes, I've already configured that ahead of time. So I'll be able to save some time for myself. That's what I wanted to show you here. All this process that I've just told you, and I went over with you on all of the headings, all of the buttons and colors are just to speed up your workflow, as I've already mentioned before. And I think you should use them because I usually use them when I'm starting a new project. I'm setting up specifically the colors because I know the colors that I will be using in the project and specifically the font size and the font family, because I'll be using them all over the project that I will be doing. And that just saves me a lot of time instead of just drag and dropping a new heading and then just setting up the typography differently and then the font differently. One thing that I would want to know about the pixel value, thanks to Rhino, he mentions that in a good, good video about that. He says that pixels are fine value, but don't want to use them because they're not so accessible for people who wants to scale the text of your website to bigger or smaller. So that's one other thing that you should know. And the other thing that we have here, the pencil, which you can use any custom value of your own. And yeah, that's pretty much what I wanted to show you in this video. So I would really recommend you to use global fonts and global colors if you know what's the style ahead of time that you want to use. And yeah, I really hope you find any value in this video. I really hope this video helped you. And if it did, I'd be really glad to if you leave a thumbs up, make sure you subscribe to my channel so you won't miss any video that I post on WordPress, Elementor and WooCommerce. And as always, I'll be seeing you in the next one.